Cycling is a great metaphor for leadership. It requires effort, passion and team spirit. I do love cycling in the mountains, challenging myself and having a good time with friends and all of this surrounded by nature. Normally I do long rides of more than 70k. Today I plan to head out to the hills surrounding Barcelona. Two business leaders will join me, Arjen Schouten, a successful entrepreneur and alumnus of IESE, and Tanya Gomez, a second year MBA student who works in sustainable development. So together we'll explore leadership and the human side of business, and of course, cycle. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, Franz. Good to you? see you. Looking sharp. Yes. Huh? Yes, true yes colors. All right. Something different than being in the business suit, huh? Exactly. Oh, Thanks wow. for coming all the way to yeah. join me here on this ride this morning. Well, you know, my pleasure. You know, it's always good to be back here in Barcelona and where there's something sporty going on Thanks. or jumping on my bike, you know. It's going to be windy, it. just Is like it? in real life. Oh, yeah. I mean, but uh, you know your way here. So uh, I think uh, I best follow you and uh, make right. something fun out of it. All right. Let me show you. Let all me right. show you the way. All right. Follow me. Let's go. You seem to be a... Uh, Pretty good biker, friends. Well, thank you. I don't have too much time, but I do like to dedicate some time to biking. It helps me to, to relax after work, after the, at the end of the week. I don't know about you, but I also see that it uh, helps you to disconnect from, from some topics and focus on others, actually. So it's, it's, it's actually not an idle time at the same time. Well, I recognize, mind, uh, I recognize what you? you say. I recognize what you say. You know, when sometimes I go on my own and, uh, you know, it gives me time to think. Yeah. Right? And come up with a wonderful solution about uh, business, but also <laughs> private life. But, um, but I also very much enjoy to do it, uh, you know, with, uh, with my friends or even with colleagues. And, uh, you know, you have time to chat, right? And uh, right. chat in a different environment. How do you maintain over time the sense of purpose in an organization, specifically when it's growing so much as, as your organization was, was growing in the 2010s? Well, the purpose of the company is something that I think that you discuss already when you hire new people or when you define, and also when you define the dot on the horizon. It's, it's like, you know, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go with the company? And uh, we always had a slogan, of, you know, if you can dream it, you can do it. But then the question is, you know, how do you get your teams, the people around you, to live up that same dream? Exactly. And, uh, well, what I've always done is that I spend a lot of time with my uh, team members. Uh, and in the beginning, that was easy because there were not so many. Yeah. Is that up to 250 people, I knew all their names. But I also knew their families. And uh, I, th I think that is still very underestimated that you know people by the names and know something more personal about them. So it's all about making the connection and having a genuine interest in people. That is, it's also a comfortable position. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's even a more comfortable position yeah. to be in. I've had experience also uh, where we were not exactly sharing the same uh, vision. And uh, then it comes up yeah. to decisions, you know, how do you continue with each other? Do you continue with each other? And uh, for the sake of the company, but I would even say for the sake of the people around you, the teams around you, you owe them that you, uh, that you solve these issues uh, rapidly. Yeah. yeah, so the tough decisions are the ones that involve people, typically, no? I mean, typically, always. Going quite well, even though you're under stress, you're under pressure. Yeah. Um, but the I'm tough decisions saying... are the people ones. No, because first you build a team that's very yeah. cohesive, with yeah. very strong bonds, and, yeah. and somehow, for some reason, things need to change because the direction has to change or maybe yeah. people also, I mean, in the end, and this is a living organization also. No? So over time, people change priorities sometimes also. No? They do. Talk their, about their, partners their, their, life, their life changes, you know, you come yeah. through different phases in life. Right. And so you need to, the, the strong bonds make it tough precisely also to recognize at yes. some point that yes. Yes. Well, a new I mean, chapter has to be started. Uh, you know, sometimes you say it's uh, leadership by walking around, walk, uh, the talk and talk the talk. I try to inspire the, 
the, the, the, the leaders around me to work in a similar way and mm -hmm. to always be accessible and available from the work floor up yeah. to the office floor, yeah. right? Right, so here we are coming to the top of this little hill. Wow, that's a marvelous view, huh? Yes, uh, a little bit metaphorical for when you are a leader and uh, you have this view from the top and uh, you know, how I always envision this is that in the end you, uh, you need to define that dot on the horizon. You know, that is where you want to go. But uh, what I've learned over time is that, uh, you know, to, uh, to use your team and uh, let them define the route. Right. And, and they come up with the most brilliant solutions. Exactly. And, uh, exactly, and yeah. then you just follow them. And what happens is that, you know, there's multiple ways of getting to that dot on the horizon. But, uh, you know, you're, you get inspired by your team members that, uh, that have come, come up yeah. with smarter ways to get there. And oh, exactly. they believe in it. So I think you need to be, be humble also no? as, a, as a leader to understand that, yes, from the top you have this vision so you can, you, you do see things that others don't see. So you can tell where to go, but you also need to be humble to realize that you probably don't know exactly how to get there. I mean, that is what I myself, I, uh, I like the most uh, of building a business, you know, being with my teams, being close to my teams, could be in an office in Amsterdam, but could be also in offices in Hong Kong or New York or in, uh, in Madrid. So I've been traveling a lot, basically to be close to my teams. Can you establish that online as well? If, if I hear people now, they say, yes, you can. I don't know. We yeah. still, I think it still has to, we still have to find out yeah. how that evolves. I think it's, it's good to maintain relationships. Maybe creating new ones is more difficult. And, and certainly if you want to have deep relationships, being with people. But I think we're going to meet one of our current students and a new generation of students. So. Let's see what they have to say about oh, that. Would be extremely about, interesting. You know, Looking forward. Doing connections, yeah. meetings, you know, and staying in touch. So let's let's go and talk to her. Let's do so. Right. Here we're arriving at the place, and now we can talk to Tanya, and a future leader. Let, let's see how she thinks about leadership and the developments in the world. Lovely. Here she is. There we have her. All right. Let's see. I don't fall. How are you, Hello. Tanya? Hello. Good. Nice Thanks to see Thanks for coming you. all the way. Nice meeting you, Tanya. Nice, nice meeting, meeting you. you. Welcome. How are you? How was your ride? Very good. Amazing. A little windy. Excellent. Need a little bit of a break? We do, Definitely. actually. Yes. Absolutely. Let's go on in then. Thank you. All right. I think you have a place here reserved, no? Time for a bit Very of a break. Good. Yes. Oh, Thanks for it. waiting for us here preparing this. No worries. What did you folks speak about? I think there was a question no, of, <laughs> of how, how much of that is, is, is valid today. No? Or how, does the, how does your generation think about leadership and, and what, is, what is tough actually in business to do? Wow. Thank you. All right. Lovely. Very good. Very good. Super interesting question. Um, and I think there's a lot of things that are similar, but a lot that has changed as well. Okay. Um, I'm a part of the millennial generation, or at least at the tail end of it. And so I think that our generation has a lot of, of a mix in terms of what we want and what we desire from those who came before us and those who have come after us. Um, but one of the things is that I think our generation is super purpose driven. So I don't, I feel like in my parents' generations or those before me, um, there was this need to, you know, find a job, you stay in the job, and that becomes your career for, for decades. A lot of us think that a job is not just a job anymore, it's also, does this job align with how I view the world and what is it that I want to achieve, whether that's through sustainability or whether that's mm -hmm. through um, impact in a way or um, whatever values they may have. I, I, do, I, I think that also existed in previous generations, but we see it a lot more of a shift now. Um, that open-mindedness and that, that purpose-driven attitude, I think, is what really drives leadership for us. Real leadership, no? as in actually making it happen. I think sustainability is one of these topics that everyone spontaneously signs up on. Mm -hmm. uh, but then to actually know how to do it, to understand that this is multidimensional, there's many different things you need to know, and you need to make it really part of your overall strategy as an organization, 
and actually make all of that work is, is really hard, actually. But nowadays, uh, just to, to make them feel comfortable, as comfortable at the office space as at home. But nowadays, with people working so much from home, it's a, it's, it's a challenge, you know. How do you, how do you still create that, uh, that team spirit and how do you create uh, yeah, that connection? Uh, how, how do you look at that? I think it's definitely a big issue. So I think finding ways to speak to the people in the room, meeting them where they're at, you can do that regardless of where you are, whether it's online or in person. Um, but all this to say, I think it's, it's, it's that building that culture piece. And I think that you can still do that bridging the gap online. You believe you can do it only online or should that be a mix of between off online and offline? Yeah, no, I, I definitely believe in the hybrid approach. And for me, there's nothing more enriching than the in-person connection. If you would be leading a company, Tanya, in uh, let's say five to ten years time, what do you do different than what you see around you right now? For me, what is really valuable is this idea of inclusive leadership and bringing, creating space for the people that need to be in the room. I hope that 10 years down the line, there is no such thing as chief sustainability officer or sustainability right. manager, that everything, or you know, chief diversity officer. I hope that in these years, we're building the foundations and the frameworks that it just becomes second nature in every organization. And we're all just doing it as a part because we know that it, it's what needs to be done. And that's what I would hope to be a leader of in the next 10 years. And thank you for this. I hope you folks enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your bike journey. And I appreciate you guys sharing your perspective with me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great day. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, Arjun. Wish you Thanks a great for ride. taking all the time. All right. Good Have luck a with day. everything. Keep Good luck touch. with everything. Okay. Take bye care. Bye-bye. It's been a good day. I'm happy to have spent the day with two great people who are also authentic leaders. We share the same vision, a real passion for people, humility, and a drive to make an impact beyond ourselves. I truly believe that if we lead with the right values, the future is clear, it's going to be better. Real, authentic leaders, those who don't just use buzzwords but actually touch upon the relevant issues, are the first step to making companies a force for good. And when leadership is real, a better world is possible. <laughs>